From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. The way ahead is hard, and it is still true that many lives will sadly be lost. I urge you, at this moment of national emergency, to stay at home, protect our NHS, and save lives. I feel like um, life has changed a lot, you know. I feel like you're not able to enjoy the things that you used to as much, so you have to be careful. I'm only 17, we was in school, and it was like, big thing about leaving school is like, oh, your, your t-shirt signings and your proms and this and that. And it was like, we got called into an assembly on some like random Tuesday and they was like, right, tomorrow's your last day of school. And we was like, Phew. in my school, there's like the whole back wall when you walk in is all like the different years is pictures. We don't even have a picture. It's like, there was no time to do anything. I didn't really understand it at the start because I didn't realise how quick something can impact your life. But I mean, I just seem to be like just trying to get on with it and just see how things go. It's just really like, it can be confusing sometimes when you think about it, because it doesn't really make sense. I feel nervous. Feels like I'm just gonna fall off. Yeah, right. I thought they was just gonna be smart and block off to like the airports and to stop people from coming in, but of course they never done any of that because. But so it's a bit silly. Like sometimes the government don't even know what they're doing themselves. Like yeah, I've been coping with it all right. I, th I thought it wasn't real for a second. I didn't think much of it because I just thought it was like a little thing that couldn't really affect anyone. And then it just came to a, like a huge halt and everything just started going downhill. And the main really subject now is just the corona, like everything's just stopped. The way we had to go into a full lockdown, I found that really hard, where you could only go out for necessities and that was it. It's been okay, but it's a bit hard being inside all all the time because you can't go out and see people but it makes sense because you don't want to spread a virus around. No, you don't get to see your friends and you just stay in home, at home. There was no school which was kind of good. I was kind of happy because I'm one of them kids that does not like school and I had a lot of time off school. Home learning, Google Classroom, boring, really boring. Where there was online school, it was hard to always stay on track with it. Sometimes like waking up on time was hard. Where it's online, internet can be an issue as well. So sometimes it would cut off and then you won't, wouldn't be able to talk as long as you would in person. I know other people at home was like struggling as well because they either didn't have a laptop or a device to use at their house or they didn't have like good internet. It's sort of harder when you're doing it at home because in school normally there's teachers to help you and like you do have your parents to help you but they don't help most of the time. It's boring, it's, you don't even get to see any of the students' faces or, and stuff. Just not even the teachers sometimes. 
plans to further ease England's coronavirus lockdown have been put on hold because of a rise in the rate of infections. There was a lot of restrictions on where you could go because of the way it was spreading. You had to wear masks and it was overall just trying to stay clean, making sure not to go too near people. Well, my nan hasn't really been able to go out to the shops and that because she like, has to make sure and then that means I have to make sure that I'm like extra careful as well when I'm going to the shops and just make sure I always wash my hands when I get home. It made me open up my eyes to like the world that we could have been in but now like it's just completely changed. As soon as the lockdown here I was just like I was wondering how like, so many people are dying and like I didn't think it would affect us this much. The hardest thing for me was when some of my family members caught it um, and where they had to go to hospitals, it was just really worrying and I didn't know if they were going to be okay. They were in quite serious part of the hospital because of where they'd gotten it so bad. In lockdown I lost my granddad and he only lived like two doors down from us but because my whole life he lived right next door I was like I don't really need to go and see them. They're right next door, I'll just say hi. But then when it happened, I was a bit like, wow, like you just don't really know what's gonna happen. Obviously, people have been going to hospital a lot. Um, people passing away. People have sadly been dying from COVID because I did, through well, this year, I did lose my granddad, but I just realized this part of life, it happens. And even though it did, <coughs> happened because of Covid, but it would happen anyway, so just part of life. It was hard in lockdown because I lost three people in two days. It was my great nan, my aunt and my uncle and they had all gone into hospital and they had their underlying health issues as well. But then on the death certificate it all came on the Covid as well. And so my uncle died first, he was, I think he was in a coma and then like he came like through and then um, Covid hit him, I think he got in the hospital or something and he gained Covid then he passed away and then I had my great nan and my aunt and that was her mum and sister and then my nan passed away from, it was like high blood pressure and Covid as well and my, her daughter passed away but it was like under, in 24 hours all of them and it just like changed the way you look at things. I don't really like speaking to people about how I feel, but it's the fact I could go out with my friends and just take my mind off of it. And I always had my granddad there and I've been living with him and he just tends to help things and being around family, just like you can speak to them and like be around them without thinking about it for a few bit. It was nice to know I just have them there. I would never like fully open up to a teacher because I don't like the way they handle things. I'd rather just say it to my friends or like to a youth worker because they understand you more and see where you're coming from. Hi, my name's Jez Meyer, and at this time of year we're all busy making plans for Christmas. It's easy to forget that not everybody has families to go to at Christmas. We have a large population of elderly people in our neighbourhood and many of them face Christmas alone. Which would be bad enough, but a lot of people during 2020 already feel isolated and lonely. We felt that the young people from the area should be able to give something back this Christmas and to remind our elderly residents that they have not been forgotten. We started a social action project in which we provided over 100 care packages to elderly people and we have been distributing these over Christmas. We rallied together youth centres, cadets and other local businesses in order to turn this into a reality. Hi guys! We'd like to donate these funds for some chocolates for your winter appeal. We wanted to give these gifts our own personal touch, as if we were gifting them to our own grandparents. So we ran a competition to design hand-drawn artwork that will feature on all of our bags. The runners-up have also been included in pamphlets which will be in all of the bags. We've been able to get together in a socially distanced environment so that we can get all the bags together and hand them out. We have created tote bags that will be filled with goodies ranging from thermal coffee mugs, sweets, plant bulbs and also fluffy socks. You're going to fill it up with soil first guys. That's going to be a lovely present for somebody. We're doing Christmas paintings, decorating, creating our own wreaths. 
and gardening. I feel like it's really good to help out the elderly. We're not doing this just for our sake, we're doing it for other people as well. So it's a really good cause. We have also been hand painting some Christmas decorations which will also be included. We are doing Christmas decorations today and it's for the elderly. Make sure it's nice and bright and you put a lot, a lot of care inside it, yeah? You've got to make someone smile this Christmas. Yeah, that is super pretty. Covid has made this challenging, but due to the high spirits and everybody rallying together, we've been able to deliver our care packages. And because of Brickworks Community Centre, we've been able to include food and other essential groceries. It's been great to have a fun project like this to work on. It feels very rewarding to know that our care packages will make a difference to 100 elderly people. An early morning hospital appointment. At first glance, nothing out of the ordinary but this was unlike anything before. Now, all schools and further education colleges in England will be fully open from Monday the 8th of March. Secondary school students will be regularly tested using rapid lateral flow tests. And until Easter, face coverings will be compulsory in class where social distancing is not possible. In year seven, the teacher would shout at you not to wear a face mask. In year eight, they would tell you, to, they would shout at you to wear a face mask. I just found it a funny in a way, because it's just like everything's kind of upside down. Put a mask on in school, like keep a distance. We're well, just making sure that when I'm at school, that um, kids, kids and that don't like get too like crowded on top of you and that, and you've got, you've got to make sure that you like step back and stay away as well. Well, now the schools have opened, so I go to school, learn, maybe go out with my dad somewhere for like an hour, because that's what we're allowed. I was relieved because we could finally go outside a bit more, and um, obviously still with some restrictions, but it was quite relieving to step outside for once in a while. A lot of people that I know, um, you know, really anxious to get back out and kind of, you know, party in and. Um, things like that. So I feel like it's going to be a big challenge for younger people to kind of make sure um, we're kind of like obeying the rules and stuff and make sure we're protecting each other while still having fun. At least now like you can see quite a few more people and you can go to more places like places are opened up. So there's just more activities for young people to do and stuff. Hey guys, we're here at Bike Maintenance. Obviously this has been a really strange time for all of us and the young people that we've been working with have been indoors staying safe like the rest of us. But now we're able to come out and socially distance and work with each other in a safe space and get back into the summer. Today we'll be studying bike maintenance and it is going superb, really, really great. Met loads of people, nice community and it's awesome. It's such greatness because you get to learn the new skills and then how to do pump a tyre and all that. It's just, it just makes me happy. When I went outside, I was so scared and I was terrified. But when I started to join this course, it made me feel relieved and happy because I'm no longer scared you know, of this pandemic, you know? I mean, I'm just happy I'm here, you know? I feel like I was trapped in a sort of hole <laughs> at home but you know being out of the, the home it just it felt refreshing because you don't want to be stuck in the same old house doing stuff like that and but being outside it just makes you clear your mind and focus. Taking a bike you get to learn it, repair it yourself, what's not to love you know that's amazing. We've been fixing bikes, uh, making basically we choose a bike like a bike frame uh, it has some of the parts and over an amount of days we'll uh, fix the bikes. I really enjoyed it. Very like motivating. They make you want to do stuff 
Yeah, it's great. A good, um, good like vibe, you could say. It's nice. Yeah. My summer's been terrible. Just staying inside has driven me a bit mad. It's just not very fun. I'm not gonna lie. It's not good when you're when you're young. It's just it's not good for your mental health to stay in like that and not do anything, not have anything to do. It's not healthy. It really affects because you get in that pattern of going to school and then suddenly when you don't have anything to do for that long of a time, it really just makes you feel like down. That's hard. It's the best I can explain it. My view on life has changed definitely. Uh, after COVID, 100%, because it's made me appreciate some of the things that I took for granted before. So, you know, even things as, as small as breathing, you know, you're able to breathe the air. And I want to go to places where I can breathe freely and I can, you know, really experience nature. Being in my room during COVID and kind of just being in my house and, um, you know, being in one place, it's made me realise that there is a lot to the world and, you know, my four by four room, you know, I want to see way more than that. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to just having a normal school life and stuff. Yeah, I just want to go back to school. I'll go to a nice place to eat outside. Probably couldn't do it right this second, but like help recycling probably. Save the turtles or dolphins, I don't know which one it is. COVID taught me that we actually have a lot of time, a lot of time, and we don't realise how much we waste it. My aspirations have changed to making sure that I'm, you know, using my time as well as possible and, um, yeah, not wasting it, really. It's going to take a long time for us to be back to normal, even if we are going to... It's a new normal, isn't it? I mean, COVID isn't gone, you know. We can't lie to ourselves and say that COVID is gone because it's still here. Um, and people are still being affected. Um, I feel like it's going to take, you know, a slow approach, and I feel like we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to like work together. Most of the time before uh, Corona happened, I didn't really hang out with my friends as much, but now it's just opened my eyes. Like I should spend as much time as possible. It can give you a lot of hobbies to do. Um, like I said, with the art, I was able to, with no restriction, I could just draw and. I've gotten quite good at it over the time, so I'm just really happy that I was able to pick that up. Seeing family that like I don't know, uh, that I haven't talked to in a while, some that are like uh, in different parts of, like some are in America, some around here. I just want to get to see them, know if they're okay. Um, probably seeing my nan and going to Smith's with her. Well, obviously, because I'm a kid and I like toys and stuff, but also, to spend time with my nan. It was a big life lesson for everyone, I think. It just makes you think that something can come so quick and change everything in a short amount of time. Just the people around you, you gotta make sure like you spend enough time with them, stuff like that.